Good morning, everyone. This is Brent Kiefer. I'm the Vice President of Digital Marketing here at Leader One, and we are joined today by John Becker and Ryan Minnick, and we are going to kick off the Leader One Live series. This series will start today with using video within your business. And our, our guests here, John Becker and Ryan Minnick, have an extreme amount of experience using video in their business. They're going to share with us all their tools, their, 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 their tricks, and their tips on how they got started in the industry. And we're going to have some questions for them. You're joining us live on Zoom. You're joining us on our social media platforms, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Feel free to chat any questions you have for John and Ryan, and we'll do our best to try and field as many of them as we can during our, our show here today. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this kicked off and get it started. We're gonna start off with John and with you, John, we have some questions specifically about the, uh, the way to get started. You know, a lot of originators have questions about using video in their business. What's step one, how do we get started? Uh, step one's pretty simple. Um, just need a webcam. Uh, preferably one with a good speaker. Um, the way I, and Ryan and I were actually talking about this last week, um, uh, the during process and efficiency in communicating with borrowers is kind of the gateway drug for video. Uh, you can take your time, you can you know re-record it if you need to or give it some thought. And that's really what uh, most of how I employ video in my day to day is about efficiency and communicating with borrowers. I don't really do too much on social media or anything like marketing, but, um, uh, you know, since I started in this business about seven years ago, I have been recording scenario worksheets, uh, you know, our loan estimates, closing disclosures, et cetera, for our borrowers. And frankly, I can't imagine ever having, you know, not being able to do so. It's a very efficient way to communicate the information. It saves you time. They can rewatch it and without fail on all our post-closing calls and a lot of our reviews, the number one thing that people love is the video. So to me, that would be the best way to start because it's going to create time for you. Um, it's going to improve your client's experience. And um, yeah, it's just a, an overall win. Interesting. So to, to be clear, you're not using video so much on the social media side. You're using video to communicate that process of the, the mortgage and how to get it from you through a video where you're explaining all of the details of that specific customer experience. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So cool. that's just a lot of off the cuff recordings. Um, but we do also employ it in certain situations, uh, again, to save time. Um, so uh, we actually offer a guaranteed pre-approval here. And for you know any of our purchase clients, when uh, I have the initial phone call, I have to go through the whole explanation of what a pre-qualification is, what a pre-approval is and then leading into explaining our guaranteed pre-approval. So in order to save time, uh, and I can actually show this video here shortly, just yeah. use a couple of pre-recorded videos that when they actually schedule that call with me, they'll get an email with a link to a video that explains a lot of that ahead of time. So it saves me time and just creates more efficiencies. Wow, that's, what a great idea. Never thought of using video to explain a step in the mortgage process, a one-on-one -on -one video specific and custom to that customer. That's a great idea. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, and I have actually uh, an example. Let me share my screen here really quick. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so should be able to see the email template. Yeah, sure can. Okay, gotcha. So this is uh, just emailed this to myself. So this is exactly what one of my clients would see. And the um, software that I'm using here, which we can circle back to in a little bit, is called Loom. Uh, and it's inexpensive and it's got a lot of neat features. One of the things in particular, particular I like is that you can just uh, paste this GIF image in the file. So it makes it very clear that it's a video and it draws a lot of attention. But I will send this to them. And this is my example of a five minute loan estimate recording. So here, so this is exactly what they would see. I had to actually log out. Um, and good morning, Katie and Brandon. So I figured I would take the opportunity to allow you to put a face with the name and voice. Uh, but let me go ahead and switch just over to my screen here, run you through these numbers. So this is a conventional fixed interest rate purchase loan, 18 years. Uh, estimated purchase price, 800,000. Now putting 10% down is gonna leave a 90% loan to value or LTV ratio. 
an interest rate today without paying any additional um, cost to buy down interest rate. It's going to be right around 5.375, uh, and that loan amount with 10% down is going to be about 720000 so we do have processing and entering fee as well as the appraisal, which just as a quick heads up, the appraisal is the only fee that we would ask that you pay prior to closing. Um, it's also a fee for credit report, flood certification to see if the home requires flood insurance, which is rare here in Georgia, but um, does happen. And then an electronic uh, closing fee. Um, so for the closing attorney um, here in Georgia, we do not select the closing attorney. So this is going to be part of the negotiations on the sales contract with the seller. Um, so we're just using a placeholder here uh, who is indicative of what to expect for most closing attorneys uh, in the metro Atlanta area. Um, now, the two biggest charges here, the owners and lenders title insurance policies. So these are going to be pretty much the same regardless of which title company is used. Um, they're based off of the loan amount and purchase price. The other four fees are just how this particular closing attorney has chosen to name and itemize those. Um, so I guess that's a pretty complicated way to say that you might notice a lot of variation in terms of the names, the number of actual individual fees and how they're broken out. But for this purchase price and loan amount, this is a very good number to use as an estimate. Now, for the government, there's going to be a fee to record the transaction with the county, as well as a standard $10 Georgia residential mortgage fee. And then there's two taxes due to the county. One is going to be calculated based on the loan amount and the other on the purchase price. So uh, all told, um, estimating closing costs for this purchase price uh, and loan amount right around $10,000. Um, do want to kind of circle back and uh, reiterate on the owner's and lender's title insurance policies and the transfer tax and the tax stamps here. So those four things are based on the loan amount and purchase price. Everything else is fixed. Uh, now, separate from closing costs uh, is setting up your escrow account for taxes and insurance, as well as collecting the first 12 month policy. So once you're under contract, you will need to shop for your homeowner's insurance policy. And I'm just using an educated guess here. Um, at closing, we will collect the first annual policy. So you'll be covered for 365 days from closing, but then we'll also set up an escrow account. And we do that with a couple of extra months um, based on the policy amount that you select. Uh, and that's just to give them a little bit extra as home values continue to go up. Unfortunately, so do property taxes and homeowners insurance. So there just needs to be a little extra in there in case the bill is a little bit higher next year when those bills come out. Um, so property taxes, again, using an educated guess there uh, just based on the purchase price. And we always try to estimate more on the high side, um, much rather you know, have a pleasant surprise when you identify the house versus the opposite. Um, now, we're going to set up the escrow account for the taxes uh, with the same two month cushion, but unlike the homeowner's insurance, property taxes are not so um, are not conveniently due on the anniversary of your purchase every year. So property taxes being due sometime in fall in the state of Georgia, that can be any time between September and December. Uh, and the current year when you purchase the home, that tax bill will be prorated between you and the seller. So given those variables, we've just learned through trial and error that, you know, at this point early on, we just split the year down the middle um, and it winds up keeping the cash to close number that we're working towards from varying as much as possible. So as a quick summary, you've got purchase price, estimated closing costs, first year homeowners insurance and estimated escrow account set up. All that adds up to what I think of simply as the magic number to get the keys in your hand. Now, notwithstanding any sort of earnest money deposit or even potentially seller contributions that might be negotiated from the seller. So just the 90% uh, loan amount that we'd be wiring on your behalf, that would leave you coming to close with uh, uh, between 96, 97,000, which is simply the 10% down payment, closing costs and prepaids. For the monthly payment, you've got principal and interest at this loan amount and interest rate. And again, my educated guess for the taxes and insurance. Um, and as we had spoken about on the phone, that you might be surprised how inexpensive the mortgage insurance will be, given that um, both you and Brandon have excellent credit. Um, that would be about only about $48 a month. We looked at the six national providers available, and this is the best um, quote that we could get for you today. So all in that monthly payment around 67, 68 and change. So hopefully this makes sense, at least in terms of a starting point. After you've had a chance to watch this and discuss, just give me a call back. Wow, this is uh, this is awesome, John. You know, a couple of questions that are coming in from a few of our channels. How many 
how many questions do you get from customers after you send this? And, you know, what kinds of questions are they? So, and that's actually a really good question. So honestly, very few questions. And usually they're not questions revolving around the numbers or at least not the breakdown of the numbers. It might be more on a strategic level. Um, they might ask questions about, well, you know, what if I put more money down? Different kind of loan structure questions. But nine times out of 10, especially, you know, we do this starting with the scenario worksheets um, and going all the way through the final closing disclosure. And by the time we record the closing disclosure, <clears throat> honestly, we probably maybe one out of 50 clients have have a question because we've already explained the numbers. They've seen it multiple times. Um, so, yeah, it's a massive uh, time save and uh, improvement. Interesting. So every time you're about to send something out to the client for them to have to review or sign, disclose, you're doing this video process to explain what they're about to see and really get ahead of the questions before they even ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Just in terms of the numbers and loan structure, obviously we can't record every single you know piece of the disclosure package, but um, yeah, we just try to get ahead of it and be very clear on it. And the benefits there too are, you know, if there's more than one borrower, they can, you know, take the time to watch it take turns uh, and then watch it multiple times. Right. And then they can circle back and ask questions, which is why I've got the and great feature of Loom. You can see this link here to schedule a call. So as soon as they get done, they can click this and schedule a 15 minute call with me if they do have questions. How often does that happen? Um, well, I, again, I would say in terms of general questions or follow up, it's usually a question on next steps, but in terms of the numbers and, you know, going over uh, closing costs, very, very rarely. So how did you find out about Loom? I think you mentioned Loom is the tool that you're using. How do you find out about Loom? What other kinds of softwares are there out there that, that would help you do a screen record like this really simply? Yeah. So actually Ryan was the one who told me about Loom. We were in, uh, Puerto Rico last year for the Leaders Club Summit. And uh, we had met before, and I know that he's very much tech and video inclined as well. In fact, I think that my partner, Scott, um, took a lot of his cues uh, from Ryan originally. Uh, but he had mentioned uh, this program and it has, you know, nothing's perfect is what I would say. Um, we've used a few different ones before, Snagit for a long time with um, Screencast. Um, and while that program is much more uh, robust and powerful. It's got a lot more features. It's a bit slow. Um, so Loom is very, very quick. As um, soon as you get done recording the video, and it, you can immediately link it and send it. There's no upload process, anything like that. And as I said, it's got some really useful features for the cost, which I think right now is $12.50 a month per user. Um, you know, Features like adding in these links. So I've got this um, link here will take you to a Calendly, or uh, if you look over here on the right, you can click view transcript and for every video, it's automatically going to generate a transcript of what you said. That takes maybe about 60 seconds from the time you complete the video. Wow. Um, That's yep. great. And the, the GIF feature as well, we used to have to go through trouble of creating little icons to hyperlink in our emails. But, um, you know, the fact that you can just copy and embed that GIF right in the email is fantastic. So for starter or day to day, um, use, you know, Loom is the best thing that I've come across thus far. That's great. And, and so tell me about the webcam. We've had some folks asking, uh, you know, webcam, are you using something that's already built into say your laptop? Are you, you, did you purchase a specific webcam? What, what kind of recommendations do you have there? Yeah. So have done some trial and error there. Um, Ultimately, the two pieces of advice I would have is just get a webcam, you know, max would need to be about 1080p in terms of resolution. Um, and you just want to make sure that the webcam itself has some pretty decent microphones to pick up your voice. So I have used combinations of microphones and cameras before to kind of make up for that. But um, currently, and I've been happy with it right now, I'm using a Logitech Brio, B-R-I-O. Um, I just checked this morning. You can find it on Amazon. Um, I just realized I could probably stop sharing my screen. There we go. Uh, you can find it on Amazon for about $143. And what I like about it is the microphones are excellent. So that's exactly what I'm using right now. Um, I don't really use laptop too much. Um, but yeah, I'm sitting at my desk and recording, or as long as you're within five to 10 feet of the camera, the microphones on this are great. So it's a one-stop 
uh, purchase for the 143. That's awesome. I, I think it, it looks like what you're saying is, you know, this video is accessible anywhere. You're going to email it, and you could also text it. I assume this link. Yep. They can access it on a, a laptop, a desktop, their mobile device. Watch it as many times as they want. Potentially even share it. I think you mentioned borrowers might share between themselves and co-borrowers or other family members. You got a first time buyer with a lot of questions. They may forward it on to their folks or other family members and friends that they trust or help review it. What a great tool. Any, yeah. other, uh, any other ideas that you can help us share with using video specifically to help describe these steps in the process? You've got the Loom software, you've got the Logitech Brio, and we're putting these links in the chat, by the way. And uh, you're recording your message to help explain it. Anything else we should know to help get started on this one particular piece? Uh, no, I think that's it. It's really not very expensive to get into. And again, the, the return on that minimal investment is you know, tenfold. So I strongly encourage everybody to um, you know, get over the fear on you know, discomfort that they might have on recording video. Um, you know, you'd noticed, or at least I had noticed rewatching that video I recorded <clears throat> that is clearly not an 18 year loan. It's a 15 year loan. Um, and you know, no matter how many times you record a video, you're going to stop and say, uh, or lose your place or anything like that. Just keep going. Um, you know, don't have to be perfect. Us and ums, notwithstanding, just keep powering through. Right. Yep. Well, that's the last question I think we have for you coming from the field, you know, what this step of not using video to the first time you're using video, what's the deal? How, how do you get over the fear? What's the number one step to, to get over the fear of video? Um, I, a couple of pieces of advice. One, and this one embarrassingly took me way too long to, to, for it to occur to me is the pause button is your best friend. Um, uh, and if you were to go back and look at most of my videos, um, you'll see the cursor so I can kind of show people what I'm looking at. Uh, and with Loom in particular, if you were to ever see my cursor just dart over to the left side of the screen really quick, that's because I'm pausing it because I had completely gone blank on what I was going to say next, which is totally fine. Um, I would say probably nine out of 10 closing disclosures I record, I get halfway through and realize I have no idea what the closing date is. So I have to pause it and go back. Um, so that's a going to help you, right? You don't have to get it all perfect in one um, fell swoop. Um, the other is to remember that we're supposed to get loans perfect. We are not supposed to be perfect movie stars. Um, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error uh, and, you know, might get a little bit frustrated, but it's definitely worth it. What a great message. We're supposed to get loans perfect, not video perfect. We're going to leave that up to the movie stars for sure. Uh, this is awesome. I think what, what a great segue. Unless there's anything else, I'll, we'll keep watching the, the chat for questions that, that folks have for you, John. But anything else before we toss this over to Ryan and, and take a, a bit of a deeper dive? Nope. I'm actually very interested to uh, you know, see what Ryan's going to be sharing as well. He's the master class. So I'm probably going to be looking it up in our game this year. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, th thank you very much, John, for sharing some of those your first steps that we need to take to get into video. And now we're going to transition over to Ryan Minnick, who will you know, take us down a little bit of a, a, a deeper dive. You know, uh, we're going to go down the sessions of maybe some other software that you can use, some other you know, microphones, cameras, maybe some lighting, maybe some, uh, some other video production techniques that you're using. So we've learned a little bit about how to use video in some initial phases. What's next after I get a little bit more comfortable with video? Where do we go from here, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, great question. So full disclaimer, I've got like a little head cold going. So if I cough, hack, sneeze, anything, <clears throat> I'll, I'll push through it. And I have two cats trying to break into my office. So, hey, before I get into some other programs and ways to use video, I, I just want to go back and kind of reinforce what John said, because that... Uh, that is the single handedly the biggest comment we get from our clients is the use of video speaking directly to a client, you know, displaying documents, reviewing things. They absolutely eat that up. That is probably the deciding factor. A lot of them come back to us because they've never seen that used anywhere else. And it's so simple, easy to do. So if you do nothing that I'm about to show you, do everything John just did. And it, it will significantly change uh, what your business looks like this year. Promise you that. So. One other way to utilize video aside from going directly to the you know one consumer is is kind of mass the use of mass video right recording 
marketing videos, promotional videos. So I'm just going to kind of run through. I've got about seven things here. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on, but I want to show you some of the stuff that we use uh, that makes it really, really easy to do this. I'm going to share my screen. All right. You can see the, the Canvas screen here. Sure can. Yeah, we're up and running. All right. Perfect. So I don't know if you guys have heard of Canva. Canva, it, it's it's really taken off in the last year or so. Canva, I'm going to go through pricing and stuff with you here in a minute, but it's pretty inexpensive. It's not just a platform to create video content. You can actually design flyers, print material, booklets, menus, you name it. Canva has templates for everything. And it's a pretty simple program to use even for video. So if your goal is to create an educational video, say you want to talk about a specific product, uh, you want to talk about USDA loan, for example, you could go in here and you could create a video about that uh, to use on social media or however, however you want to use it or wherever you want to put it. It's kind of what it looks like. You can see we use a ton of it. In fact, I just got a little notification the other day. We've created over 100 pieces on it. Uh, it's just super simple. There's a team account. So we actually have a marketing coordinator in our office uh, that helps with a lot of this stuff. So we can both access the projects together. Uh, if I wanted to create a new one, for example, uh, let me move this. If I wanted to create a new one, I would just hit create design. And then I chose video. It gives me options of whether I want to do a Facebook post or a banner or whatnot. I, I chose video. Once you have this video, you can actually go in here and resize it to different dimensions if you want to do Instagram or Twitter or whatnot. Uh, you've got all these templates to choose from. So if you're just if you're trying to look for something that'll kind of dress it up, there's all these templates. You can just click it and it'll insert that and you can put your video right into it. Uh, let's say you want to do an intro video. You type in intro and then it's going to give you even more options. Introduction. Um, for example, I could do this. And then I could have my video go in here. So let's say I record a video on my camera, on my computer, or on my phone. I can put that in you know, Dropbox, OneDrive, whatever, and then I can upload it. I've got an upload section where I can upload that video right into here. I can drag and drop it. Uh, here's an example of a pretty complex video I started working on for USDA. We're going to target USDA. Uh, prospects in a specific county. So we're, my goal is to clone this video from multiple counties. In this video here, it's my voice. I'll play a clip for you real quick. It's my voice, but I'm actually not even on it. Like you won't see me in it. It's just kind of a voiceover, if you will. And then these are all stock video clips. And the cool thing about these stock video clips is they're all in here. If I go to the video section, I can just type in what I'm looking for. So let's say I want shaking hands. I can type that in and it's going to show me all these video clips of people shaking hands and I can drag and drop it right into this, like right here between this, these two clips. If I want, you can change and edit the, the time of it. You can put text over the top. So I made a full video here using stock video clips that kind of relay the message of getting qualified for USD alone, you know, talking about credit, et cetera. Uh, there's music. So if you want to have background music, you can go in there and you can listen to a variety of music and you can throw it on it. Uh, I'll play a little clip. This is like 56 seconds. Wait a minute. If you live in Miami County, this is for you. Did you know there's a special no money down mortgage program available for Miami County residents? Have you been putting off getting pre-approved because you don't have enough money saved? With USDA single family housing guaranteed loan program, you might be ready now. You don't have to have perfect credit either. Average or better credit is all that's required. If you're worried about high interest rates, don't be. Interest rates are typically the same, and in some cases, lower than other types of home loans. What's the catch? Actually, there are two. Number one, this special loan program isn't available everywhere. It's designed to help households living in rural areas make home ownership a reality. Number two, your income cannot exceed 115% of the median household income in your county. This amount is probably higher than you think. Are you ready to see if USDA's single family housing guaranteed loan program is right for you? Just answer 13 questions down below, and you're on your way to owning your very own home. It's really that easy, and applying is absolutely free. Get started now. That's incredible. And this is all by stitching together pre-recorded two to three second clips. You search the topic, drop them into this software Canva, and now you have a minute long video that looks you know, fairly well produced. 
it, honestly, it's, it's, it's just that easy. And so if anybody's camera shy, you just don't think you're ready for the big screen, you know, use your voice. You don't even have to use your voice. I didn't put it on here to share today, but believe it or not, there's there's programs, there's websites you can go to where you can type a script and an AI voice will automatically render it out. It'll speak it out and you can upload that into here. So technically speaking, you could create a video from scratch and you wouldn't have your voice or picture or face or anything on it. Um, and, and <laughs> that's, <a lot> of, <laughs> that's awesome. Next thing you know, AI can even make me look better if I wanted it to go on camera. You never it, know. Possibly exists. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole nother call, AI. But this program is super, super easy. It's, it's fairly inexpensive uh, pricing plans on it. Uh, we have a pro plan because the pro plan uh, gives us more of the footage, right? If if I go back in here real quick and I go to uh, photos, for example, there's all these stock photos. You'll see pro on a lot of these. Of course, now that I want to show you, I can't find it. But a lot of these will say pro and you can only use them if you have a pro account. And uh, some of the best images and video clips are on the pro. Uh, I think there's some other benefits, but look. 120 bucks a year. I mean, for a powerful tool like that, it's it's well worth it. Yeah, the statistics are such that video consumption of data is roughly 95% of the way all data is consumed nowadays. We're not reading anymore. Blogs, they're still out there. Emails with a lot of information are still out there. But most consumers, and you know, myself included, we, we watch video to, to learn about things or to, to for entertainment. So uh, what a powerful tool for roughly 10 bucks a month. You know, as you're putting that video together, this is more of a mechanical question that came in from the chat. How do you take those images and line them up with your voice so that as you're speaking about that particular image or that image is lining up with what you're saying, how do you weave that all together? Do you do video first and then voiceover? Is it voiceover first and then video? How does that work? So I started this by, uh, I created a script. So I just wrote out the script of what I thought that it should say. And then I literally pulled my phone out and I downloaded a program where you can just record audio and I held it right here and I recorded it. So it's got a pretty good sound to it. Then I went in and I created a video project and I uploaded that audio clip. And then once I had the audio clip, I just kind of started saying, all right, what do I want to show during each one of these sentences, if you will, you know, and, I, and there's research that show like, notice there was a puppy in there. There was a baby. These are all things that work. People love and it makes them stay tuned. I started out by saying, wait, and I have Indiana, because if you live in Indiana and that comes and you're scrolling Facebook and you see Indiana, you're instantly curious and it's for you. And then it shows stock footage of actually Peru, Indiana, which is a town in Miami County. So I put in, so now if you, and I'm targeting you by the way, on Facebook, I'm going to target you in my ad. So now you're going to see an actual scene from your city I mean, I've got you hooked right up front to curiosity to see what this video is about. Um, so I just kind of build it out that way. So each sentence kind of, you know, corresponding scene. And I just went in there and searched like I want a puppy. I searched puppy and there's all kinds of puppy clips. And then there is a lot to show on it. I, I can share uh, and I apologize. I meant to do it before this call, but I did find a really good about a 12 minute YouTube tutorial on how to use this program for video. It wasn't recorded by me. Somebody else did it. Super, super easy to follow and learn. So I'll, I'll provide that link. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we can put that in the chat for everybody to use as well. And, and there's a lot of resources on how to do this stuff. It's really nice to have people on our same team that we can interact with and ask questions about those subject matter experts and, and, and share best practices that are working. Um, are you able to you know, change the length of the, the puppy scene you found? I think it was maybe two seconds long. Yeah. If your voice is starting to talk about a different topic, is it as simple as taking my two second video and now making it one just on the puppy, just a one second puppy and yep. making you, my, you, my audio line? You literally grab uh, and, and slide. So if I go in here to this, where's the puppy at? I go to the puppy scene here. I can drag this and I can make that puppy scene five seconds, two seconds, whatever I want it to be. Now, granted, the clip itself has a limit. So that may have been a 30 second clip. And then I can decide how much of it I want it to show. Super, super easy. I'm telling you, this program is it's 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 pretty. The user interface is really, really easy. It's one of the things I love about it. Yeah, Way I know more what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, John's about to take the, the next step and dive in. Way more simple than an Adobe Premiere, you know, a professional video editing software. 
this seems really, really easy to use and, and it's fairly uh, cost effective as well. And remember, you're not just getting video out of this. You're, you know, you're able to make cool graphics, images, you know, going back to my home screen here, you can see all kinds of uses. We do thumbnails. I'm going to show you how we do these live video series. I create all my thumbnails on here uh, for the video. There's a little Valentine's Day project I made uh, for my wife. Uh, Heaven's kind of our wedding song. And I did a little QR code that plays heaven. And I framed this out and we hung it up in our bar downstairs. So like, and it took me like, I don't know, three minutes to make it in here. And I scored some serious points, fellas. Um, nice. <laughs> so awesome. let's move into something else. Canvas, great, easy. Uh, there's another program called Media IO. So Media IO, not quite as in-depth, uh, but if you just want to create a video or you want to upload a video of yourself and you want to add some captions to it, which, by the way, is really, really big right now. If you're, it, It's important to understand certain things work better than others. So if you're going to create a video and put it on social media, having those, the, those captions show up in nice, colorful, bold captions makes a massive difference in your viewership. So this program, for example, um, Steve and I do videos periodically just talking about something. So Steve did one about identity theft. So I uploaded his video. And, and then basically you can come in here and you can hit subtitles. And it and you, there's a button at the top that says auto subtitle and you hit one button and it literally took maybe 30 seconds and it auto subtitled the entire video scene for scene. So and then and notice here's Steve and then I did a cut scene of this couple. Steve's still talking over them and then here's subtitles, subtitles. You know, so this one here, I did kind of dress the video up a little bit pretty easily. Here's like a credit report at the top. Uh, another really easy to use program, uh, pretty cheap. Uh, in fact, there's a free, I'm using a free version, so you can't beat free. Uh, free limits you to so many minutes of the auto transcribe, right? So I think you can do like 50, up to 50 minute video. So if you're just doing short little one, two minute videos here and there, 50 minutes a month, that's going to give you a lot of content and it's not going to cost anything. Yeah, there is a lot of research and data out there about using captions in your video. It really does improve the reach. Uh, if you're like me, you might be in a public place and having your phone audio turned up and it's going to be distracting to other people that might be around you. If you have captions, phone can be on mute and yet your video can still be you know, giving that impactful message that you're looking to do. Absolutely. You know, Facebook auto plays videos for most of us anyways. I think it's a setting, but you're scrolling Facebook and if you get your phone on mute, uh, you start seeing the tech. I just find myself, I get, I get trapped. Um, Shane Day, Andrew Cornett. I know these guys have been doing a lot of this. I'm not sure what program they're using. I'd actually love to know that. Um, but they do really, really what I would call sexy um, captioning here. All right. So like in, in this scenario, I can go in here and change the look of it just by clicking on the stylization here, what colors I want to use, what size I want to do, what font, super, super easy. And that one edit changes it throughout the entire video. So That's once great. again, you can record a record a video on your phone and then just come in here and upload it and then do the auto transcribe and it will automatically do the subtitles for you. And then you can come over here when you're done. You can hit export. Uh, you can even choose your size if you want to do it. Uh, depending on how you recorded the video, you can make it, you know, friendly for Twitter. However you want to do it. Right. And you can export that version. So this program is pretty easy. Absolutely free. Uh, that's a, another really helpful pro tip there is to know which platform you will be uploading the video. Each platform has its different screen size, the way it's going to look on a mobile device. So uh, using that feature to make sure that you download in the right way will make sure that the platform you're putting it on is going to match what, uh, what that platform is going to look like. So you don't have the black bars or the dead space on the right or the left side of your video. Absolutely. You know, when I try to record a lot of things now, kind of in a square-ish shape so that I can use that video wherever we want. We do post the different media platforms. Uh, this next one here is a mobile app. It's called Voicella. I'm going to actually share my screen now on my phone. Let's see if this works. Uh, it says only the host can share. So I am on here as Ryan's Android. All right. I can find you here momentarily. And there you are, and I am making you co-host now. All right, so you should be able to share the screen from your mobile device. All right, perfect. So I'll share my screen. 
Start now. Pull up Voicella. All right. So Voicella is a program is free. It's on Android. It may not be available on iPhone. There may be something comparable on iPhone. But look, the easiest way to record a video is to use the camera we all have in our pockets today. These phones have some of the best camera technology you're going to get anyways. Pull your phone out, do your forward facing video, record a video, come in here, hit the plus button, add the video, and then you literally can hit a button and it will auto caption the whole video for you. And I knew this would happen. Sometimes it plays right away. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, don't know if you could hear that or not. It's not really important, but you see how it uh, does the captioning there. So I can click on this little caption button and I can, once again, I can change my text design, my font, the color of it, where I want it at, if I want to move it. Uh, when I'm done, I just hit apply. And I can come up here and hit save and I can download that video. So I've, it's a real super easy way to automatically add those captions. You can even come through here line by line and you can edit it because sometimes it doesn't pick up what you say exactly right. It'll, I would say it depends on the person and how, how, how well you speak, but how well you enunciate things, but it, it does a pretty good job, but you can edit it. You can push lines down if you feel like there's too much text on one line. This could be something that you do in a matter of seconds, or you could spend a little time on it if you really wanted to dress it up and make it neat. Um, but this is a program I found that I thought was pretty, pretty easy. Yeah, it's great. It does look like it is an Android specific item. At least we found it in the Google Play Store. There are plenty of other apps out there for uh, for Apple devices, Android devices. Some of them are paid and uh, and some of them are free. Yeah. All right, now let's dive into some live stream, kind of like what we're doing right here, but on a little different level. Uh, let me share my screen again. All right, so uh, I got to get to the tab. I can't see my tab. All right, so some facts. Look, if you're going to do a video on social media, let's just use Facebook, for example, Live streaming, when someone goes live on Facebook, they're going to get so much more traffic and you can see here the difference. They're going to get about three times the engagement. If someone's friends with you or following your page and you, you do a live video, they get notified. If you upload a video to your, your page and you're not paying to boost it or promote it, they probably won't even see it. Uh, so this is just a really easy cheat uh, to take the same video that maybe you would record and then upload later and just do it if you're comfortable just doing it live. Uh, we use a program to facilitate a weekly show called StreamYard. StreamYard, you could use this uh, to go live or you can just use it to kind of put together a video production, if you will, save it, download it, and then upload it later. So we have a series called Show and Tell. Uh, we've been doing this now. I don't know. I think we're up to 56 or something like that. 60 shows we've done. We did it pretty much every week last year and we kick it off. We're on like episode eight or nine this year. Uh, if and I can't, I can't enter the studio the way I normally do because my camera's in use right now, but I can come in here and kind of show you what it looks like. <laughs> well, it's using my other camera. Wow, the other day this wouldn't work. All right, cool. So when you come into, into this program, you can kind of change up what it looks like. So we created this little show and tell, and I guess what I created that in, Canva. <laughs> right. So I use Canva to create this. Canva will also do really cool background removal. So if you got a photo of yourself, you want to cut the background out, it'll do that. Or like in this case, I wanted this to be translucent. Uh, you can create different banners. So like the show that we just did, I created this in Canva. I uploaded on here. Uh, we go live. I do a little introduction about Jeremy and then I push back to this and then it's me on the screen. It's Steve on the screen. Uh, it's our guest on the screen, and it's just an interview series. So we do a, a weekly interview series uh, where we talk about various subjects. Uh, next week, we're doing what we call Community Spotlight. We're promoting one of our local nonprofit organizations, Kokomo Urban Outreach, and we're going to have Sherry on here talking about it. We do everything we can to make other people look good. By us going out of our way to make other people look good, it makes us indirectly look good. <laughs> it's a win-win. So, And we guess, guess who's going to watch this video? All the people involved in Kokomo Urban Outreach, they're going to log in, all the board members, the volunteers, and now they're exposed to us. And we didn't even talk about mortgages on this call. 
we do this once a week. Uh, sometimes we do talk about mortgage things, mortgage products, create a little intro uh, that we can play on here, have an outro. Uh, when we're ready to go live, we can go live and this will automatically broadcast to my page, Steve's page, our leader one fan page, our two mortgage guys fan page, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, you name it. We have all these platforms we're simultaneously casting to. Uh, you could do this. Uh, you know, Molly does the Mondays with Molly. That could be a live syndication if she wanted to do something like that. And she could simultaneously cast that. Uh, it can be, use your imagination to come up with something creative. This program's pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and, and leave the studio so my camera's not on. Pretty inexpensive. Uh, we pay for the professional package uh, because we wanted to be able to, to stream to you know multiple places. Uh, you can use HD, extra cameras, all that kind of stuff. But for basically about 20 bucks a month, you can have access to this program. Now, everything I showed you in there, you can go in there and you can record and do a video with you and another person, and then you can just save it and upload it. You don't actually have to ever go live with it. That's great. We, we do have some uh, questions from the field. Let me bring a few of these in. One of them is when you're recording video, are you recording video inside of the app? As an example, uh, with Media IO, are you recording inside the app or are you recording on a separate device, maybe your phone or if you're shooting with a specific camera and then uploading that video file into the software? How does that work? Either or, either or. So with both Canva and Media IO, you can actually hit record and record right there within that program. So if you're sitting at your computer and you've got a nice webcam, you can do everything right within that one program. If you prefer to use your phone, you want to go outdoors and get good sunlight on you, you can record it with your phone, uh, upload it to, uh, upload it somewhere, you know, OneDrive, Dropbox, something, so that then when you go into that program, you can you can find that and upload it there. And it's super quick. It, it renders it out. I mean, the program, it doesn't take long. It, I've been doing video for a long time. And I tell you with compression and everything that's changed in the last five years, it's so much easier now to do this stuff. It used to take forever. Uh, now it's all pretty quick and painless. So that is uh, that is a very true statement. And our mobile devices now are shooting video in 4K. It's uh, we're, you know, we're carrying these high quality cameras around in our back pockets oftentimes. It's really uh, interesting to think of where we came from 10 years ago trying to shoot video. Oh, for so, sure. Uh, another question from the field is whether or not these videos are uploaded as a file so that the customer might be viewing the video directly from their email or directly from their mobile device, or is it really more of a, a link and a redirect to a web page or, or something else? Everything that John and I showed you today is pretty much a redirect to a web page. Even, uh, you know, um, now draw a blank. Uh, what's the program? Uh, anyways, the first program, John. <laughs> Loom, yeah. Loom. Gosh, I could not think of it. Even Loom, it's uploading it to a web page, and it's got that animated uh, GIF. And when they click on it, it's redirecting them to a web page to view it, uh, whether they're on their phone or their computer. The stuff you're going to create in Canva or, or Media IO or Voice LA, you, you're going to upload it somewhere, whether it's social media, YouTube, whatnot. Very cool. Very cool stuff. What else you have? This is a great rabbit hole to go down in some of the more finer details. Um, I will pause for a moment and say that we really appreciate you joining us for today's live Leader One session. We are talking about using video within your business. We have guests John Becker and Ryan Minnick for joining us today. My name is Brent Kiefer. I'm the Vice President of Digital Marketing. And a lot of these tools our internal teams use to help you produce video, uh, whether that be graphic content that you need at the beginning or the end, an intro and outro. Uh, helping with animated video, or if you're looking to use green screens, these are the same kinds of tools that our team is using internally. So uh, let's see what else you have on the, on the doc there, uh, there, Ryan. No, I got a couple more things. And so our marketing coordinator, Carrie, just chimed in. The other thing that you can do with our live cast, so like when we're doing StreamYard and we're recording the video, when you're done, you can also save that video as an audio file. So we after, the, we, after we go live, Carrie uploads that audio file to... I don't know the exact number. I'm going to say somewhere between eight and 13 different podcast platforms. So our weekly shows actually on iTunes, all kinds of podcast places. So just one extra step that didn't cost us anything. And we have content out there in a different format that somebody might, you know, view. Oh, that's great. Go where the clients are for sure. Thanks for joining in there too, Carrie. Appreciate the hot tip.
And if you're going to take time to do something, find a way to take that content you just made and, and get it everywhere, right? I mean, it doesn't take that much more time to do it. A couple more things I want to show real quick. Um, so we're actually on a Zoom call. Zoom itself is a great software program to use for video. You don't even have to do a meeting like this per se. You can literally open up Zoom. You can talk to this camera. You can share your screen. You can go back to the camera. You can hit record at the beginning and then stop at the end. And you just made yourself a screencast video. The only thing is you've got to find somewhere to put it, uh, you know, to deliver that to the client. Another way to really use Zoom effectively, uh, John mentioned Calendly earlier. Calendly is a great program. We use Calendly to schedule all kinds of stuff. If a client of mine comes into Calendly, and let's say they click on a 11 o'clock appointment for tomorrow, one of the options I have built right in is the ability to schedule a Zoom call with me. So they can do a phone call, they can meet in our office, so they can do a Zoom call. If they do the Zoom call, it's, it creates the appointment in my calendar and the link. Yesterday, I did two Zoom calls. I did one with a financial planner with some clients sitting in his office talking about reverse mortgages. And then I had a 20-something-year-old that, uh, you know, I'll probably never meet him. He doesn't want to come in the office. And he did a Zoom call with me to do, you know, review his prequel. Uh, do Zoom calls all the time, one-on-one, -on -one, and it's it's really, really cool tool. So don't don't discount that. Bomb bomb, last thing I want to touch base on. I'm not going to get into the logistics of it. Bomb bomb's been around a long time. It was originally created for real estate agents, and it's probably the majority of who's using it. But bomb bomb, you can put on your phone or your computer and you open it up and you hit record. And when you're done, you can type in a recipient email address and it'll send it to them. It gives you the analytics uh, like Loom does. You can see if they watched a video or not, how much they watched. Uh, it's a great, easy way to do one-on-one -on -one video directly to somebody. I used to use it, stopped using it a long time ago because you couldn't do screen share. Used to, you could only do a video of yourself, and I like to review docs and whatnot. Now you can do the screen share. So worth mentioning, it's a very commonly used program. You can It'll even embed within text messages, which is kind of a cool feature. Um, it's a little more pricey than some of the other options, but once again... Look, you know, we all make pretty good money in this industry, and this is an investment. These tools, it doesn't matter what they are, if they're going to translate to extra business, you really got to consider it. That's uh, another really, really good point. And we do have another question here for uh, coming in from the, the chat. Would you recommend refining a regular weekly production before putting it everywhere? Um, in other words, if you're going to start doing video, do you just start throwing it out there? Do you schedule it? Do you put it as an event? Do you let people know it's coming? How would you recommend that work? And everyone's different. You know, I would say don't let the complexities and a schedule and all that stuff keep you from doing this. Uh, none of us should be shy. If we're in sales, we should be used to talking to people. Um, just pull your phone out and talk about something you know, and, and, and put it on Facebook, put it on whatever. Don't even worry about dressing up. I mean, if nothing else, do that today. Just go do a video today. Uh, we went to a video marketing workshop in Dallas, Texas about, gosh, I don't even know, 14 years ago. And that was one of the first things they taught us. We had a room full of people and they're like, get your camera out right now and record a video right now and upload it. Just get it out of the way, right? It's like taking that plunge. And then from there, when people comment, you're going to start feeling good. Like, oh, that's cool. Look, okay, people liked it. Then you can start easing into, you know, creating content schedules and dressing your videos up and doing live shows and all that. But just do something today. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, and actually got to chime in on that. This is something I heard um, in the last couple of months that's resonated with me on a lot of levels, but I think it applies to video um, quite a bit, which is don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Um, again, we're supposed to be perfect alone, so we're not supposed to be perfect at video. Yeah. Well, it's such a great message. And, you know, this has really been an interesting session. We've had a lot of great interactivity, great questions from the chat, uh, positive feedback from everyone who's joining. <clears throat> we may be reaching back out to you again to ask some more questions about video. And I, I think unless you have any other magic thoughts to share, we'll probably push to go ahead and wrap up. Anything else? Closing thoughts first from you, John. Yeah, so I did want to circle back and it was one of the things I forgot to mention. Uh, Ryan had mentioned it, but to reiterate on Loom uh, for that day-to-day, -day, the scenario worksheets, things like that. Um, so 
it does have a limited functionality. So you will be notified the first time someone watches the video that you send. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't let you know anybody else that watches it. And in most cases, it's not going to tell you who. But for most of us, if you're sending a scenario worksheet to a borrower, getting an email to know that they've seen it um, can be very useful. Um, so, uh, yeah, otherwise, happy to answer any questions anybody might have. That's great. And we will be putting uh, resources out for folks to ask questions and follow up. And of course, these, these calls will be recorded. They're available on all of our social media channels. Internally, we'll have that Zoom recording for you as well. And you know, if you're part of the team here at Leader One, all of the folks here are available to you as a resource. You can reach out anytime. We'll switch over to uh, Ryan. Any closing thoughts from you? Oh, I think we touched base on a lot of great stuff. I'll, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Just just do something soon. Don't, you know, if you learn, if you got inspired today by any of this, don't go back to work and then, and then tomorrow comes around and then it's a weekend. And then the next thing you know, you're still not doing video, get out there and do something right away. Um, and, and you will get positive feedback from it. You really will. And, and do that one-on-one -on -one stuff that John showed you. That is the absolute easiest way to get comfortable in video. Your clients will love it. You can CC your realtor partners on this. Think about this when you're going over stuff, and you're being your best self presenting and, and you get to CC a realtor in that email and they get to see you at work. That's a, that's a glimpse behind the curtain. They don't normally get to see. So that's super powerful. Yeah. We copy all of our realtors when we're going over the closing disclosure. So we'll copy them on that video. And we get a lot of good feedback on that. Hey, Brent. Hey, it's yeah. Steve Pokemon. Can you, yeah, I do want to make sure you get him. Hey, I'm just going to, I'm going to jump in for everybody else. I'm Ryan's business partner. So Sure. That Ryan also does loans on top of all the other neat stuff he does for us, but uh, believe it or not. So anyways, a uh, quick story. I just want to do something. I agree with John on that same thing. We've used the loom and video. I used to use Zoom for it a lot, but uh, hardly any calls from clients when you do video. Most of the time, they're going to reply back with an email saying, thanks so much. I really understand it. So yeah. it's far and beyond. And then the other thing was, is on Canvas. So I am not techie and Ryan will be the first to tell you this. For True anyway. story. So recently, about two weeks ago, my wife got into politics. And so somebody needs to design something for her. I sit down with Ryan for what? Probably about 30 minutes, which is showing me a few little things like he did you guys a minute ago with how to drag things in it. And I've designed her flyers, her handouts, her door hangers, her mailers. I just did a video like Ryan just showed you guys for my wife politically to put on her Facebook. And dude, th that Canva is by far the uh, most cost-effective tool we've got. And it's got so much stuff in it. It's unbelievable. Oh, that's great. Great feedback, Steve. Thanks for jumping in and sharing that. You know, I, I sure there's a lot of folks that are listening right now thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to wrap my head around this stuff? But uh, thankful, <laughs> we're really thankful that technology nowadays makes things quite easy. We've even heard examples of being able to type words that you might want to say, <laughs> putting it into an AI bot and some other voice that you might like better than your own it will speak it for you. Just let me know when AI can make me look better and we'll be really, really sold. That's it for this episode. We want to say thanks again to, to John and Ryan for joining us. This has been Leader One Live, and we have been talking about how to use video in your business. We'll have another episode coming soon talking about all kinds of helpful tools, tips, and tricks and how you can use them to grow your business here in the mortgage industry and here at Leader One. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Have a great week.